Hello students, so yesterday we have seen the revision of the unit 1 which was nuclear nuclear potential and today we are going to see the revision of the unit 2 which is a nuclear shell model. Okay, so in this nuclear shell model, uh, it is a, a result of uh, a research of many years of the scientists uh, which they have concluded uh, from the many evidences that uh, there must be a shell model present inside the nucleus just like uh, when we see the periodic table when you are going from uh, one row to another row or one column to the another column as the number of the electrons is changing the properties change drastically so it's it was suggested that due to the uh, number due to the change in number of the electron the properties of the material was changing or the property of the element was changing the same idea was uh, put forward for the nuclear shell model also so there were some experimental evidences uh, which made think the scientists that there must be some shell model present inside the nucleus also before uh, coming to the nuclear and particle physics, we were just knowing that the nucleus consists of neutrons and protons. Protons are positively charged whereas the neutrons are neutral. But now, we are going to see how these protons and neutrons, they are filled inside the nucleus. Okay, and the idea was uh, put forth or the came to the mind of the scientists due to uh, some experimental results. So these are these experiments are called as evidences for the nuclear shell model. So these are the evidences uh, for the nuclear shell model. So the here we can uh, see that the graph has been drawn uh, against the number of the nucleons. Okay, so protons and neutrons are collectively called as the nucleons. So the first graph is binding energy per nucleon measured minus the binding energy per nucleon calculated now see here we have already seen the um, what is meant by a binding energy okay so the graph of a binding energy we have seen so the graph this binding energy per nucleon the measured value minus the binding energy of the uh, binding energy per nucleon of the calculated value so the difference in this uh, uh, major and the calculated value was large for some of the nuclei with a nucleon number I'll write it here so this is n is equal to 20 this n is equal to 50 so n is equal to 82 n is equal to 126 so scientists found that there are some nuclei which shows a more stability than their neighboring nuclei. Okay, similarly, so this is a delta R major upon this delta R calculated. So now what is this delta R? Delta R is a uh, difference between the uh, nuclear radius when this number of the nucleons was put forth to be x and n is equal to x plus 2 okay suppose there is a nucleus which is having a uh, number of the nucleons is equal to x so we measure the radius as r okay so and then we have increased the number of nucleons by 2 and uh, as expected the size of the nucleus or the radial extent of the nucleus will increase and we are going to get some another R. So R1 minus R2 or the R2 minus R1. So this value is called as a delta R. Okay. Now this delta R can be calculated by two different ways. One is by experimental way which is major. And second is a calculated by some theoretical calculations okay so when we take the ratio of this delta r major upon delta r calculated so it is a it was found that for some of the nuclei again this ratio was very high as compared to the neighboring nuclei so again the same nuclei with the nucleon number n is equal to 20 
So it was found that so these nuclei okay so the change in radius is larger as compared to the another nuclei. Then we have seen so this is the graph of the number of the isotones. So let me write here. So isotones are the nuclei which are having the same number of the neutrons but the different number of the protons. So for the nuclei, again with a nucleon number n is equal to 20, 50, 82 and 126, they show more number of isotones. It says that even if the number of neutrons is kept constant, even if you are adding more number of the protons, the nucleus still remains stable. Okay. It suggests that the stability of such nuclei was very high. Okay. So, these are again nuclei with a nucleon number 20, 50, 82 and 126. And the last graph is absorption coefficient. Neutron absorption coefficient. So, if you take any nucleus and if you bombard it with a slow neutron, slow means uh, the neutron which is having the kinetic energy of nearly 1 mega electron hold in a particle and a nuclear and particle physics, 1 mega electron hold is a smaller energy. Okay, so if you take a nucleus and if you bombard it with a slow neutron with a kinetic energy of nearly 1 mega electron hold, then uh, due to the smaller kinetic energy that neutron is being absorbed into this nucleus okay and we measure the absorption coefficient for such a nuclei so it was found that for the nuclei with n is equal to 20 50 and then 82 and 126 the absorption coefficient was very low it means that due to the stability of the nucleus the nucleus was not allowing to absorb any neutron further okay so by using these four evidences scientists conclude that there must be some shell model and due to that shell model so these nuclei which are having the nucleon number as 20 50 80 to 126 they are getting more stability okay so these numbers like uh, 2 8 20 28 50 82 and 126 so the nuclei which are having the nucleon number this 2 8 20 28 52 82 and 126 they are called as a magic numbers because they show more stability uh, than the neighboring nuclei okay so these are the evidences which made scientists to think that there must be shell model inside the nucleus now after that the scientists tried different ways to uh, evaluate or they tried to attain these magic numbers okay then what they did they have taken the different interaction potentials for the neutron and the proton like they started with a uh, one dimensional harmonic potential then what they did they applied scrolling this time independent equation to that then they find the relation between the uh, principal quantum number and orbital quantum number just like the atomic and molecular physics okay and by using this all Schrodinger's equations and this uh, n and l values they try to attain the magic numbers or they try to attain the stable nuclei okay so the things were not gone well with the one dimensional uh, harmonic oscillator potential then they went for the three dimensional uh, harmonic uh, potential then again it was not working well so they moved to the uh, 
wood section function see here i have written that word here wood section function wood section function is a finite potential well uh, which is uh, or whose edges are exponentially decaying so um, first the scientists have taken the infinite square well then they came to know that no the infinite uh, potential cannot be infinite so they came to the finite potential and the finite square well potential then they thought that no that the potential is not dropping suddenly okay so potential is decreasing exponentially so the wood section function is a finite function so it can be drawn like this so this is v this is v naught and this is r so this is a wood section function uh, which is decaying exponentially um, above this uh, wood section function uh, scientists applied one more term which is called as a L dot S term and they finally came to know that the nuclear shell model uh, can be well explained uh, by this single particle exchange potential. Now what is this single particle exchange potential? So by using this single particle exchange potential it means that why it is called as a single particle because whatever spin and parity of the nucleus that is decided by a single unpaired particle inside the nucleus that we are going to see in a few moments okay so by using uh, this lot of tedious calculations they come to final conclusion of this nuclear shell model which is called as a single particle exchange potential now see this is uh, this is what is called as a power of the quantum mechanics even if you cannot see a nucleus they have seen the neutron they have seen the protons and now they are trying to see that uh, how these neutrons and protons are arranged inside that nucleus okay so this is the power of the quantum mechanics okay now what now how this nuclear shell model can be drawn so see here so not like a atomic and a molecular physics the relation between n and l is not same as the um, atomic and molecular physics uh, so in a nuclear and uh, particle physics uh, in a nuclear shell model we have all the shells as 1s 1p 1b 1f 1g okay now see here uh, I have made a detailed video on how to draw this nuclear shell model. You can go and check for that video. Okay, so this is how uh, we have drawn this uh, nuclear shell model. So 1s, 1p, when you start 1d, you write here 2s, 2s will start from here. Then 1d, 1f, 1g, 2s, 2p, 2d. So look, all the shells are available in a nuclear shell model. Okay. Now see this is the relation between the uh, principal quantum number and the orbital quantum number. So principal shells are yes, P, D, F, G and H. As I have said already that all the shells are available. And the value of L for this S, P, D, F will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And now by using this L dot ES term, these shells are splitting into the two subshells as L plus one half and L minus one half. So S for L is equal to zero. This shell is not splitting. So this will remain as S one half. But this P L is not equal to zero. L is equal to one. Therefore it is splitting to uh, P three by two. That is L plus one half and uh, L minus one half. So L so P three by two and P one half. Similarly, so this D will split into D five by two and d 3 by 2 and so on okay now what is the use of this nucleation model what you are going to get out of this nucleation model so the spin parity of the nucleus uh, any kind of the nucleus can be evaluated by using this nucleation model okay now see here this is the isospin uh, isospin uh, it means the uh, total uh, angular momentum of a 
spin which is called as a iso spin and so the speed and parity for the any nucleus can be evaluated by using this nuclear shell model now this nuclear shell model also says that uh, to lower the energy these neutrons and protons are paired inside the nucleus okay neutron is pairing with a neutron proton is pairing with a proton okay now see here we have drawn that uh, same nuclear shell model over here we have taken one example of 7 and 15 so for the 7 and 15 so the number of protons is equal to 7 and number of neutrons is equal to 8 now what we have done we have drawn this shell model 1 s 1 half 1 p 3 by 2 and 1 p 1 half so we have divided it into two parts okay one for neutron and one for proton so so the number of neutrons or the protons in present in a one shell that is always numerator plus one suppose if there is a one f 7 by 2 numerator is 7 so it may consist of maximum of 8 particles 8 protons and 8 neutrons okay so for 1 s 1 half we have now for the 7 and 15 we have so this 7 protons okay so the 7 protons can be fitted into 2 protons will be here as the numerator is 1 2 will fit here as a numerator is 3 so the 4 protons will fit here and one proton will remain over here so 2 plus 4 is 6 and 7 proton so 7 protons are arranged inside the nucleus of the nitrogen like this okay similarly neutrons 8 neutrons are there so 8 neutrons out of this 8 neutrons 2 neutrons so 4 neutrons in a p3 by 2 and 2 neutrons in a 1p1 half now what this single particle exchange potential shell model suggests that this single particle which remains unpaired that will decide the spin parity of the nucleus. Okay, so the this is how we write the spin parity. So this is a spin and this is a parity pi. So spin is one half and parity is negative. Now parity for L is equal to E1, parity is positive and L is equal to R, parity is negative. So for P orbit, L is equal to 1, which is R, therefore parity is negative. Okay. So what we conclude from here that by using this nuclear shell model, we can evaluate the spin parity of the any nucleus okay now this is the ground state of the nucleus now suppose somehow i apply some amount of energy to this uh, 7 and 15 nucleus then what happens so this proton okay which is in a, so this nucleus is totally in a ground state so that proton may jump to the so which is the orbit above this so it is 1 t 5 by 2 so this may jump over here okay and what will be the spin parity of the excited state so the excited state spin parity will be 5 by 2 plus okay so by using this nucleus shell model the spin parity of the uh, any nucleus in a ground state or the excited state can be evaluated so this is one of the most famous application of the nuclear shell model though there are some limitations of this nuclear shell model and to overcome these limitations we have given the collective vibrational model and collective rotational model above the shell model okay so this is collectively called as a collective shell model okay so what are the limitations the limitations like uh, uh, suppose there are uh, two uh, nuclei okay which are having the same ground state spin parity and the same excited state spin parity but the exchange particle or the unpaired particle uh, for one is a proton and another is neutron so there is a difference between the energies of this uh, two uh, ground state and the excited state nuclei let me tell you clearly suppose uh, 
So this is a calcium and suppose this is a scandium. Okay, so this is a ground state spin parity and this is an excited state spin parity. If this is one half minus, this is also one half minus and this is three by two plus and this is also three by two plus. But here the um, single particle exchange for or the single particle which is a proton and here the single particle is a neutron or the unpaired particle is proton and here unpaired particle is a neutron. If this is the case, uh, even if the ground state and the excited state spin parity are same, so the energy difference for these two nuclei is different which is not explained by using this nucleation model. Okay, so you can say that uh, some excited states of the heavy nuclei were not explained by using this nuclear shell model okay or the single particle exchange potential shell model so what we have done uh, means uh, we have observed uh, for a even even nuclei even even nuclei means the nuclei which is having the number of the protons and number of the neutrons both are even so almost all even even nuclei show uh, the first excited state as 2 plus so this first excited state was nearly observed at the say 1 mega electron hold okay now when we consider this case okay so the breaking of the pair and making it move to the higher shell it requires the energy of nearly 2 MeV okay and I am saying that some even even nuclei show the first this excited state as a 2 plus nearly at a 1 MeV so these kind of the excited states were not explained you know, by using this nucleation model Okay, so this additional uh, excited states can be explained by using the vibrational model and the collective rotational model of the nucleus. Now, what is this collective vibrational mode? So, this, uh, this, mo this uh, model suggests that uh, the nucleus is continuously vibrating. So, it is in a uh, vibrating position. Uh, it is not steady in a space but it is not vibrating randomly okay uh, it has uh, some quantized vibrations okay out of this uh, we have given two modes which is a quadrupole mode and a octopole mode and the particular modes of the vibration will correspond to the particular excited states okay so see here so this quadrupole mode of the vibration can give the excited state to the nucleus as 4 plus, 2 plus and 0 plus. Similarly, octopole mode of the vibration can give the excited states like 3 minus and the range of this collective vibrational model is nearly 1 mega volt to 2 mega volt, mega electron volt. Okay, so along with the vibration, nucleus is continuously rotating okay so the for this rotational model will also give some additional excited states to the nucleus and these nucleus or uh, these excited states uh, are in the range of 100 kV, kV to 800 kilo electron volts so now suppose if i have a nucleus and whose first excited state is a 2 plus and it is at a nearly say uh, 800 kV then I can say that this excited state is obtained due to this rotational mode of the nucleus. Now if I have uh, any excited state which is at a 3 minus okay and it is in the range of 1 mega electron volt then I would say that that excited state is coming due to the vibrational mode of the nucleus and now if i am having any excited state which is about 200 2 mega electron hold 
then I can say that that is due to the jumping of a proton from one excited state to the another or the next excited state. Now see here, uh, this is why I love quantum mechanics. Even if you are unable to see that particle, you are trying to explain uh, how the subparticles are arranged inside that particle. Okay, so neutron is there or the nucleus is there and neutrons or protons are arranged inside that and we are trying to tell uh, how these neutrons and protons are arranged inside that by using just the theoretical quantum mechanical calculations. Okay, and above that, if I supply some amount of energy to that nucleus, okay, if I supply 100 keV, if I supply uh, 2 mega electron volt, I, I can uh, guess where the excited state of the nucleus will go or what will be the spin parity of the excited state if the amount of energy supplied is a different. So this is why I love quantum mechanics. See here, even if you are unable to see the nucleus, uh, you are trying to say, tell how the nucleons are arranged inside this by using the quantum mechanical calculations. So the neutrons and protons are paired and these are arranged in a shells like this. And above that, you are trying to tell that if you apply some amount of energy, if you know the amount of energy, then you can also tell or you can also evaluate the spin parity of the excited state of the nucleus. Okay, so this is how um, applications of the quantum mechanics are totally in the uh, nuclear and particle physics. Thank you for watching.